guys, it's Aaron. So we're back for more dynamic components. Apparently this is going over well. You guys keep saying you like it, so I'm going to keep making them. Uh, we're going to do one more. I promise this is the last one, but we are going to do another frame. Uh, dynamic components can do so much more than frames, but it's a great way to show the interaction of different pieces inside of a SketchUp model with dynamic components. So that's why we do frames so much, or why I choose to do frames so much. And hopefully you guys aren't getting bored of them. So it was only three. It could be a lot more. But uh, I promise we'll get through this frame right here, which is going to be a little more advanced than the last two. And then we'll move on to something else like a door. So anyhow, let's go ahead and hop right in. All right, so what we're going to look at here with dynamic components is a way to, in the past, we've always had basically just rectangles connecting. And see here, we actually have a taper. So I want to resize not just the size of the frame, the overall size, but the size of the material and have it actually change too. If I was to put all this in one piece and I was to start scaling materials, I would start to get distortion at these corners. So I think about if I resize this uh, this way, it's not going to resize symmetrically. So in the past, we had those symmetric rectangles we, we had in our frames. In this case, to keep this wedge shape and make it the same all the way around, I have to break the frame into eight pieces rather than the four we were using before. So this is the geometry I created. I didn't want to go through this. There's enough, uh, we'll have to do enough fast forwarding through input anyhow. Uh, I figured this would be the, uh, an easy thing to skip was creating this geometry. This is pretty basic, right? So I have just a wedge shape and then my corners. So I took these and I created my dynamic component. So I have one dynamic component, and then in that component, each of these pieces is a separate piece. I did that off camera. That was pretty simple too. So I'm going to go ahead and right now, just like we had before, open up my options and my attributes. Okay, so I'm going to make three attributes for this frame. The width, the height, and then the size of these rails. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. You guys have already seen this happen before, so this none of this should be too terribly difficult. All right, there we go. Three different attributes here, so I can come over here and say I want this to be three feet tall with a four inch rail and two feet wide. Those values in there and apply that. Of course, it's not going to change anything, but it does put those values right here into the screen. All right, now next thing I have to do is I have to line up all these pieces and give them their proper attributes. So we'll walk through the first one together. The first one we'll do is this bottom rail right here. So I'm going to find the bottom. I'm going to expand that and I need to add attributes on where this is going to be relative to the whole frame and then how big it's going to be. So I have to add position where is it going to be? So it's going to be in the bottom, so I don't have to add a position along the green axes. I do have to tell where it's going to be horizontally, though. I want it snug up against this corner piece. If you forget, if you can't keep track of red, green, blue against X, Y, Z, you can watch the upper right corner, and that little icon will show you what you're looking at right there. So we're saying how far it's going to be over from this axis right here. So that's going to be, there's the red, that's going to be my X. And the position, how far is it from this point? So this point is the axis of the entire dynamic component I'm creating. If I click in here, I can actually see the, the handles or the, the axes of each individual piece as well. So this is saying, where do I want to put this point relative to this point? And I want that to be the exact width of whatever my rail size is set to. So I'm going to hit equal, rail size, enter. So now that is four inches over. All right, now I need to tell it how long it's going to be and then how tall it's going to be as I'm looking at it now. So that's going to be, those are length values. So my red axis is my total length. So I'm going to turn on length X. Now I'm going to hit plus again. And I'm going to choose, in this case, it's going to be this direction. So that's my length Y. So my length X is going to be equal to the overall width of the window, the frame, minus rail size, minus rail size. So just like before, I could have put two times rail size, but that was easier for me to hit rail size minus rail size, and I'm going to hit enter. So that's my, my dimension minus width of, of the rail twice. 
Last one, how tall is it going to be? This is going to be equal to whatever the rail size is. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this value. I'm going to be using this value a lot. Since each of these pieces is going to have it at least once, I'm going to go ahead and Command-C or Control-C to copy it and then hit Enter. That way I have it queued up. It's on my, my uh, what do you call it? It's ready to be pasted into any of these values as I go through here. So that's good. I need to do that same thing now for each of these other rails. They're pretty similar. Uh, some of these are going to have two location points. Some of them are just going to have one. These, these two will have X and Y to be defined. This one will just be the green axis, so just the vertical dimension. And then each of them will have a length and a width. I'm going to fast forward through that. Before I do, I am going to turn on formulas. I like to look at this rather than the numbers. And uh, I'm going to do this quickly for the top left and right pieces. Okay, so now we have the four rails in the right spots. So now we just gotta get the right, all four corners the right size and in the right spot as well. So before I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse my dialogues for my corners. And now I'll just come through each of these. I'll start at the, yeah, I'll start at the bottom left. That's right here. I'll walk through this one and then we'll speed through the others. This one I actually don't have to add the x or y because it will always assume zero so it'll, it'll go stay there unless i tell it otherwise um, it's not a bad thing if i want to hard code x and y to zero uh, but if i don't move it it will stay right there um, in this case i do want both nope for both of these i do want the length x and the length y and both of them are going to be equal enter to what I have pasted, enter, and that puts that down there. All right, the bottom right is going to be very similar because I'm going to have, same thing, length x and length y, both of them set to that rail size. Oops, I saw it resize back here. And then this one, I do have to set my X location. It's how far is it over on the red? And that's just going to be equal to the width of the frame. So I'm going to hit my X. And I'm going to say that is equal to overall width. Enter. And that puts right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to set the size of the top two corners real quick right now. Okay, and with that, we have all the pieces in the right space and the right, right size. So we can t do a quick test like we've done before. I'll come in here and I'll change my height. Let's make it a foot taller. All right, everything moved right. Let's make it a foot wider. Awesome, let's change the rail size. We'll bump it up to eight inches. All right, we'll skinny it down to two inches. Cool, everything looks like it's working pretty well. So you can see how that dynamically resizes too. We didn't add a depth here. We could have done that if we wanted to force a specific depth or give the option of, of making this a certain height. But uh, for what we're doing, what's important is that it's resizing all this geometry and that I'm keeping like a, a consistent face around here. The slope is staying the same size. So obviously if I make my rail size bigger, so if I make it 12 inches, that slope is a lot bigger, this flat part's bigger, but it's all staying relative to each other. All the pieces are lining up as I resize the material. That's the important part. Now, some of you, those keen-eyed amongst you, have probably noticed that I can very easily tell where the corner piece ends and the side piece begins because I have this line here. Let's go do some cleanup on that. The last thing we do on this frame. So I'm gonna double click to enter this rail I do currently have component edit hide rest of model turned on. So as I go into edit geometry, it hides everything else. That works for me in this, this case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these lines on the end. I'm gonna go to entity info, 
and I'm just going to hide them. Grab the ones at the top, hide them. And now what I'll do is I'll work around each piece, grabbing just those edges, hide them, hide them. And what that'll end up doing is it'll give me this at the end. So it looks like this is one continuous piece, even though if I click in here, this is a separate piece from this piece, but because I have the lines hidden, I don't see them. You may also have noticed, and this was intentional, that when I created this, I didn't create a solid, I created open. That is for this reason, because if I had that material on there, that extra piece there, it would still, depending on my zoom level, show through at the edge. So I do want to make sure as I'm doing this, I do have those pieces not created. So I'm going to go ahead real quickly now and just go through and hide all those edges. All right, and there we go. That's the last piece. So now if I come in here, just going to do a little bit, do this again. We'll just shrink it down. 36, 24, make our material maybe 4 inches. You can see how that resizes as I do that and automatically it keeps that material size and those, those pieces connecting together even though that geometry is changing. So there you go. I promise that's the last frame we'll do with dynamic components maybe. From here on out, no more frames probably. If you did like that, go ahead and give us a like down below. And if you don't already, do click on the subscribe button. We put out a couple videos a week and you'll get notified if you're a subscriber. Like you'll know when the next one after this video comes out because you'll be notified, but only if you click that subscribe button. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. This entire series is being created because a lot of people ask for it in the comments. We like to hear what you want to see. We also like to hear if there's a different way you would have gone about doing it. So if there's something that you would have done different, you would have, uh, I don't know, done something other than the way I did it, love to hear about that too. We like making these videos a lot, but we like making them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.